Most of the buildings in downtown Youngstown were built between 1870 and 1930. Their architecture was the topic of a walking tour hosted by the Mahoning Valley Historical Society and the Youngstown Historical Center of Industry and Labor. We want to take people around and have them learn more about and appreciate uh, the history and architecture that we have in downtown Youngstown. Today we peel off the layers to learn the history of the buildings in flashback. Flashback is sponsored by Hickey Metal Fabrication. Welcome. I'm really happy you joined us this evening. This is part of Ohio Open Doors, which is a program by the Ohio History Connection. It's a partnership with the Mahoning Valley Historical Society and the Youngstown Historical Center of Industry and Labor. We call the power of preservation to look at historic downtown Youngstown and why, you know, what's here and why it's important. We started at the Ross Radio Company building, the Burt building. This was built in the 1920s and it's got a little bit of classical elements on it, but it's already starting to move out of that and into the more streamlined Art Deco. Art Deco was actually started in the mid-20s. Art Deco draws from other motifs like from ancient Egypt and there you'll see stylized Egyptian motifs, stylized Mayan motifs. Majority of what's left of the historic buildings in downtown are from the early 20th century before the Great Depression in 1930. What you see the most is classical revival using old Greek and Roman architectural motifs. And really the, the signature part of downtown architecture is terracotta tile, which was used to finish uh, a lot of the facades on the buildings. We'll look at the county courthouse, some of our tall skyscrapers are all neoclassical or, or some version of that. We're gonna go, keep going this way. If it's used for something else, we call that adaptive reuse. We'll see the new hotel. That is an example of adaptive reuse. We are gonna go into the Wells building. This building started life as a men's haberdashery. It was a men's clothing store. It's neoclassical. You have those round things, those are like cartouches up there. You see the points, the things sticking out underneath the eave? Those are called dentals because they look like teeth. An architectural firm took it over and now is adaptively reused. I was the project architect on this. Most of the exterior was uh, rehabilitated. Even the more modern front here, which was done during the 50s, part of a, a renovation that was done for the W.T. Grant department store. Onward and upward. That building and the Wick building, they were both designed by um, Daniel Burnham. Daniel Burnham in the late 19th, early 20th century was one of the leading architects in the United States. We have buildings by lots of famous architects in this town. Burnham was really one of the early promulgators of the skyscraper. The federal building, by the way, is considered our first real skyscraper. The white terracotta building over there, number 20 Federal, that was of course the old Strauss department store. We're in our central square, but this is known by m numerous names, the Diamond. It was called the Diamond at one time. You have the 1907 Stambaugh building. And if you're wondering why it looks, you have a, two cornice lines, it's because the original building only went up to the eighth floor. Our beautiful central tower, I just love this building because I think it's a fabulous example of Art Deco. If you look at the top, that is all drawn out of Mayan architecture. Buildings send messages, I think. You just have to know how to read them. And that was the Mahoning Bank building. It's the Huntington Bank building. Another, uh, we would actually call that a variation in neoclassical second Renaissance revival. The original Mahoning Bank building started where it does, but only went down to where the first, I think where the first awning is. And then the other four bays were added later. We have the Mahoning County Courthouse over there. That building was designed Charles H. Owsley and Louis Boucherel. But if you'll notice the, the joints, it's are really deep between the, the stones. You can even see it from here. The fancy term for that is rustication.
the Macquarie building you know, is L-shaped, so it, it was here first, but there was another building on the corner that they tore down to build this building. If you look at the top of the build of that building, that feature is called corbeling, where Whistle and Keg is. Another very fine little Art Deco building. I think it's just cute as all get out. You've got some of the streamlining going on, but you can see all the stylized floral elements on it. This is called the Peggy Ann building. We have a few remnants of our 19th century past. By the way, what they did to the State Theater, we have a name for that. That's called a facadectomy. The building next to it dates from the late 19th century. And then of course the draft house is another, it's a little later, but it's also neoclassical, yeah, in 1899. The fact that people like the Str Strollo's firm and all these other people have invested in downtown to, to bring it back. It's not the downtown it was even when I was growing up. It'll never be that, but it's something new. And yet they're using a lot of the old structures to lure people downtown. But what they have going on is fun and interesting. I really have an appreciation for downtown Youngstown that I never had. I'm thrilled to think that our town is coming back to life. It's going another loop. Now we're living here. Now we're enjoying the town and revitalizing it. The biggest secret in downtown, and, and I've heard other people say it is you have to look up. You might see things that you aren't normally going to see just by keeping your eye at you know, your own height.